Hey guys, crazy Monday to start the week. Let's talk about the first play on the day, E-R-O-S. So this one, they had news about you know, a deal with mu YouTube mu Music in India, and it was breaking out trading above the 250s previous resistance around the pre-market mark and that's why I thought you know, this thing could push but I wasn't going to buy the breakout so I, that's why I bought the dips in on the pre-market level here and here and then like I was trying the the idea was to sell into the push right this is the first these are the first major dips after this run pre-market after the news broke out so that's why that's why the idea okay like there's some profit taking, but this is the first chance for the late buyers to come in and buy this up to try to push a stock. So I want to join them. But like, you, you, like I got stopped out on the last piece. You know, of course, it would be nice if it continues running into the threes, but we didn't get that. But you always have to respect your stop. So that's why I don't buy breakouts because I'm selling into the breakout. Like the, there's no long after this breaks, breaks like breaks the highs. Uh, next one, crazy stock, KRTX. So this is coming after the sentiment from uh, CSTN or CNST and NXTC from just, was it last week, two weeks ago? They are also similar biotech hype stocks. But with this one, actually like Goldman and City, they actually came in to upgrade the stock to like 109 and 112 or something crazy like that. So that definitely helped to fuel the stock. They actually announced offering after hours, but they didn't tell you the price. So depending on the price, that's gonna you know determine where whether the stock has upside or downside. Because there has been happened before where the stock, yeah, they announced offering, but the price was extremely like it wasn't like anything crazy that we have for the penny stocks. Like when they offer, you know, the, the offer was like 80% price cut but with this if they offer something like 70 or 80 this wouldn't sell off like all the other hype stocks that we've seen before but KRTX so the you no know, like technically speaking if we're just talking about the technicals it's breaking above all-time highs so like when, when stocks do that it's extremely bullish you can see like you know the volume breakout is extremely uh, significant compared to the IPO price so you never want to short this and counter trend trade because you could get squeezed going to 100 so that's why I loaned at the open and I'll be honest with you like I sold like three quarters of my size before it even hit fifty dollars. I had no idea this was gonna run to eight hundred dollars, right? Like everyone's saying that oh the hell they held from thirty all the way to ninety nine. No man, like I sold most of my shares by fifty. And then yeah, I did add some back. This was halted and I added on the unhold. I added and I sold the majority from the ad again. I had some leftover from previous, but the majority after this ad, the, my average was about <laughs> $55. Or, or you know what I mean, 55 or 54. But I sold the majority into this and then like I had some left, like really tiny 110 size left for the what if it goes to $100, right? The what if money, like you just kind of leave that uh, I think I had my stop just like beneath VWAP after it broke the highs. I had my stop at $52 after that. You know, like I just kind of let it run. And every time it looks like it's going to top out, I sell a little bit of that baby size. You know, like it's nothing huge. I wish I could say, oh, I hold, I was smart enough to hold the majority into $100. No, man, I wasn't that smart. So yeah, that's a big play on the day. Some of the smaller ones not really worth talking about. I sure the PSTV covered, didn't catch everything of course, but you know, it was really hard to get filled pre-market. The volume was extremely thin, so it didn't have much at all. And the stupid trade on the day was JMIA. They had some negative news come out and I chased the weakness and I immediately popped after I chased it. And that's why where I you know, added some and I was like, you know what, I shouldn't be in here. So I covered and right after I covered, it dumped. <laughs> That tends to happen. It dumped like 20 cents. So that's the bad trade on the day. So we'll see how, what happens tomorrow. So let's talk about the loser on the day first, which is Roku Short. This, I don't know what to tell you, man. It's just a shitty entry. I shouldn't have started in there. It was a nice start to start here and then added some and seeing how fast and strong was reclaiming. That's why I covered. Think it's going to push higher and retest the highs. 
but after seeing how fast I rejected, that's why I started in scaling in short and added onto into the slam. So after seeing how fast this little flush got bought up, that's why I was thinking, okay, like this is probably gonna form a higher low. So that's why I was covering the majority into this, and then I stopped out the the, the last piece of it here. So this ended up to be a small red on the day after the initial stupid entry here. The next one, M Y O V. I was really happy about the loan at the market open, but I gave back a lot of it um, in the middle of the day. And I'm, it's unfortunate, but I'm still happy to be coming out green on this trade overall. I was buying the momentum and buying the price action at the market open, seeing how fast the stock push and how much volume it was pouring in at the open. You can see there was like 2.5 million within the first 30 minute candle. This amount of buying volume, I was just joining the trend and squeezing everyone out. Everyone's trying to short this gap overnight from $6 to $13.60 at the uh, pre-market highs. Everyone's trying to short it. It was easy to borrow at the start of the day pre-market. So that's why I was thinking it's gonna squeeze. So I loaned it here and I'm selling most of it up here. And like, this is a really bad entry here. So this is where I gave back some here. I, I gave back some here and I added here and I sold it here. So I gave back a lot of my profit from the previous one. And then I loaned some here after seeing that volume is coming in, it's gonna curl to retest the highs. And then the, the price action on this one was really hard to trade because it keeps on, every time it tries to push after this initial push, after this reclaim, it, every time it push, it just gets slammed back down. And it almost seems like it's gonna sell off many, many times. And that's why I was really cautious on loaning this after this VWAP reject. But it reclaimed again, squeezing, squeezing. I wasn't in at all in, in this point. And with this volume coming in, I was just buying the squeeze up for like what, 50 cents? Not bad, 50 cent squeeze, and I stopped out the rest here. Wild, wild week so far with all the biotech hype and all the pumps. But as usual, let's start with the loser on the day. MYOV, I was trying to short this thing on day two, because yesterday I saw this violin sell off, and today I was leaning short, thinking that today it's gonna sell off. But all the biotechs are hanging on really, really strong today, and didn't sell off really till the end of the day. So that's why I scaled in short nearly, I scaled in short some pre-market and I added in short at the market open, covered into some of the washes here. But then like I kept the majority, right? Cause I was thinking this is gonna sell off back down to 1150s, 1050s. So I kept the majority and I got stopped out when it squeezed with above average volume. So this is a loss here. And I reshorted again here. I was shorting this red to green because you know it reclaimed the green early in the day and when it failed later in the day I think that was gonna you know continue selling off as per the original thesis but this time was smaller size because you know this stock has been really really tricky like it keeps on reclaiming you know red to green and then it reclaimed again on day one and of course it did again this morning so it was smaller size so I was trying to let it work so I added and you can see I didn't cover any because I was I wanted to add into like a winner you know but this just kept on hanging um and that's where i was cut i cut it at the end of the day 10 minutes before the close so the this was also a small loss so overall on this ticker myov was a loss on the short side now the bigger winner on uh, the bigger trade on the day actually happened pre-market with cgix and arav so pre-market when the news came out that's a that's the perks of having benzinga with the news alerts and I heard they were talking about, you know, positive news with this pump, CGIX, and not a biotech. I checked the float, low float with only 1.6 million shares. So alongside with all the hype that's been going on with MYOV yesterday and KRTX on Monday, you know, like low float and part of the momentum, part of the hype, part of the sector, that's why I loaned. Loaned it here and I sell it into it and added, seeing how strong the momentum was, added and then sell it into, sell it into every single pop. You know, I didn't want to outstay my welcome. And on the first pullback, that's why I added uh, and then sell into it. You can see like, I was always selling into all the breakout and buying the dips. And I had a really nice gain on this. And at the market opening is when I f***ed up. Because I kept like a t super tiny size and I was thinking that it's gonna pop towards seven and eight possibly. And I, so I kept a small size. 
And when it flushed down, I didn't mark it open. That's where I was trying to, you know, buy the dip, right? I was thinking that this is going to hold the $5 and then pop towards the highs again. That was the original plan. So I messed up here with the, the trade at the open. I was long here. I was selling into some, but like you can see, I was selling for losses here. So I gave back some of the profit from pre-market. Like it was really frustrating because I had such a nice day on this and I had to give back like almost almost one third of my profit was extremely frustrating. But you know, like I, I cut my losses and I was just watching at this point. And this is when I started seeing squeeze with this amount of buying volume. And that's where I was thinking, okay, this is the reversal. And, and I didn't want to make the same mistake as I did at the market open. So I was super small size into this. I was scaling into it, small size. I was trimming some when it doesn't look like it was going to hold $6. And I was selling into the ribs and was adding in small as well, adding into it. And then when it starts ripping, that's when I add it even bigger and sell it into all the breakouts. But this is another dirty stock. They're working with AC Wainwright, lots of uh, dilution in the past in the SEC filings and uh, they have warrants exercisable at $7, I believe. But anyways, that's why I didn't want to outstay my welcome. I was selling into every breakout because this kind of dump, you know, was likely going to happen. It's a penny stock after all. Oh, another one, uh, pre, another pre-market nice little game was ARAV. Pre-market. So this one, ARAV, was actually alerted by Benzinga before CGIX. So the momentum was extremely strong. You know, the same idea. I was buying the first dip and selling into the rips. Of course, I didn't know it was going to hit, like, you know, $29. I was thinking, oh, you know, a nice little pre-market scalp. You know, I was still drinking my coffee. It was, like, 4 a.m. Pacific time. I was still chilling. It's just getting, like, a little nice starter wing on the day. I was all out here. I wasn't in. And here I was trying to short the weakness after how hard it was slamming down. So I scaled in short, a little starter size. I was thinking it's going to fill the gap down to $6. And when it regained with this kind of volume, that's what I covered. And I flipped long. I flipped long thinking that it's going to retest the highs possibly because at the time the leader of the biotech hype, um, KRTX was the leader, was curling on the on the day. I was thinking it's going to start breaking out. It's going to bring momentum back to the upside with ARAV, MYOV, and uh, CGIX as well. But, you know, I was selling into the ribs. It had some trouble around this area, so I trimmed some. I sold everything into this VWAP breakout. Again, didn't want to outstay my welcome. It's just purely a momentum trade. So we had a really good momentum so far this week with a lot of biotechs and we've had almost you know a brand new penny stock gapper every single day and today definitely was a day where i feel like my discipline slipped yes i still ended the day green but i'm very unhappy about this trade here w a f u so this one i was pretty early on um with Benzinga pro and like catching the momentum on the front side which is something I've been doing a lot this week, as you can see with all my you know, past recaps from the week. A lot of momentum on the front side, loaning all the dips and selling into the rips. And today, I think I got overly confident and overly cocky with my trading, especially on the loan side. So today I was trying to do the same thing as I had, you know, loaning like a small size and selling into all the rips and not outstaying my welcome. But this ad right here was definitely the worst ad of all. Um, on the day and yeah I was able to sell some into those pushes from the ad but I, I got greedy I kept a majority on like in the in the past few days I've always you know added and then sell into all the most of the rips and I'll keep some and then add if momentum continues or we'll just get stopped out and you can see I didn't do that I actually kept a majority from this ad here and I was actually caught in on hold on the way down so pretty nasty so you can see the ad was for 50 and then the on hold was 420. So I lost like more than a dollar a share with the final ad here. So I gave back all the profit on the front side and I ended this trade with a small red. So I'm very, very frustrated with that. So like it was really hard. It was, you know, of course, I'm very disappointed in myself for giving back so much on the day. But after this, I just kind of like you know, stepped away. I didn't want to go back into this chop because this is how I make mistakes in the past. Like if I had like, if I had given back some profits, I'll be like trying to make it, all the money back. 
and that's not good trading. So I avoided this altogether after that. The other trade on the day that was really nice was BPTH. So this one, I was actually alerted by Benzinga when it was around $11 about some, you know, some PR pump, BPTH, again, my long-term downtrending chart, lots of bag holders. I come, I was trying to get long here around $11, never got filled and volume was really, really thin, couldn't do that. And, uh, but when it starts pushing to a high of 1560s, that's when I got interested in shorts because 1560s around this area on the daily chart. 1560s, 16, $17, though these wicks are telling me that there's a lot of sellers in that area. So that's why I wanted to scale in short. And then I got a huge size because it just kind of started dumping after I got filled around 40s, 1470s. Uh, I wanted to add more if it pushes towards you know, 1550s, $16. But you know, like after it starts working, I just start covering small pieces at, the, at a time because it has all the potential to gap down, uh, sorry, to fill the gap on the downside. So cover, cover, covered, and I kept a small piece on because there was just no one buying it after that dump, right? You can see this volume was only 14,000 pre-market and then there was a lot of selling around 20,000, 30,000 selling volume. So that tells me there was no real interest in buying this. It was just a pre-market pump. And as you remember, in many of my videos, I say there's always a reason they're trying to pump, right? And that's why I kept some of it and I added it in here, seeing that this is so weak. And I see this amount of selling volume coming in, coming in pretty much at the market opened. And that's what I added. And after that, I got sidetracked by WAFU. And when after this curled and I started like just kind of like dripping down, like watching paint dry, I just covered everything. So I covered this this tiny ad here for a loss, but I covered the rest of the size from up there. So I covered everything and literally like, you know, like an hour later, they dropped an offering at the market. ATM offering, nasty, nasty. From $10, $10 down to $8. Ooh. So the other better trade on the day was HEPA. So this one, I'm actually pretty proud about how I traded this one because the daily chart, this is a recent bag holder chart from October 17th. You can go check the chart. This is a chart on October 17th. What happened here? They gap up pre-market and start selling off at the, near the market open. And at the, at the open, the squeeze all the way to the retest pre-market highs and just dumps, right? So this tells me that this stock has the ability to kind of like come back alive and squeeze all the shorts out before the eventual dump. So especially when the daily chart is such a recent, you know, like this recent spike is October 17, the same intraday chart I just showed you. So that tells me a lot of people are going to want to get out. And the news wasn't even that strong, to be honest, with this ticker. So I'm sure they are pumping up for something. There's always something in the SEC filings. So I miss, I was really frustrated because I was punching my orders in to get filled at, I was expecting like a, like a pop to 440s at the market open. And it just dumped at the open. And like people are saying I always chase weakness, but that's not true. Like when I'm shorting weakness on the pops, it's really small size because I was leaving room for me to add up here, especially after seeing the daily chart and the intraday chart from a month ago. I know this has the potential of squeezing everyone out first before the final dump. So you always scale according to your plan. Like if it just dumps straight up from $4 to, to no, 320s or something like I missed the ad. I only had small size. That's fine. Like I'm okay with that. But what's more important is that I give myself the room to add if the opportunity comes. So I scaled in on the pop to $4 small size again. And I added in some here after seeing this, this, this wick candle from when it's squeezed from 380 to $4 to 420 is quickly slammed back down. So that, confirms me that there's a lot of selling around the $4 area. So that's why I'm adding in some more here and added in some more here when it looks like it's gonna, you know, do the squeeze thing to the pre-market and squeeze everyone out like I talked about. So I scaled in some more here and left the majority of the ad up here to 450s. And why did I up here, add here? Because I can, I see this amount of buying candle squeezing everyone out, but there wasn't 
it wasn't anything comparable after that. Like you can see, it's just red candle and some small green candle, small buying, and then this giant wash is what I was looking for. So that's why I was confident to add up here near highs at 450. This is a very nice ad. I'm very proud of myself for doing that because in the past, like I would just hesitate and and not add and just it would just slam back down again. Um, with a lot of my trades in the past, you, you might have seen them. I'm always a little bit timid with adding up here, but with this one, there's many factors confirming that, mostly the daily chart. And, and I was covering into the wash, right? Because if I was full sizing, I need to be able to cover into all the flush. So I covered a majority after that final ad um, into the 409 flush, right? And I still kept, you know, like, kept half of it. I want to be able to add into my winners. That's something I've been actively working on. So after this, the stop would have been 430s, right? That after this ad and the flush, I added a little bit more on this bear flag, thinking that this is going to fail. After trapping all the shorts here and squeezing them out and trapping loans up here, it's going to straight up dump. And that's what happened. So I was covering all the flush here, flush here, cover some more here. The best cover was near the end of the day around uh, 340. So that was a nice little trade. The other one, CGIX, this one has really, really tiny size. The borrows were too expensive and I couldn't get filled. Gilding here, um, pre-market, very small size. Added some more here, I had some more here to add at 480s, never popped that high. It went to a high of 475 and just straight up dumped. And I was just covering into the wash. So this one was, wasn't that big at all. It was just a small, small win. Nice little way to end the week. Shorted IG, that's the only stock I traded today. Huge gap up from $4 all the way to $9.70 pre-market. Shorted the uh, the little dump at the open after it was rejecting $9 area really quickly. Shorted here and then I rejected, I covered some and after the pop, I reshorted using the pops and then because it was, again, a lot of these uh, wicks candles in the $9 area that shows there's a lot of selling in that area. And reshorted here and reshorted here onto the breakdown of this level. And then it just starts dumping. It was cover, cover. Actually, these two are covers and this one's a reshort, I think. Uh, reshort on the, on the little uh, bounce uh, and cover into this, cover some more. And now it's... Uh, rebounding a little bit, but I'm all done for the week. Nice little way to end the week, finishing the week pretty strong. Thank you guys for watching and have a good weekend.